Hey guys, this is Thunder E from Border Work, and today I'm going to show you Android L on the Nexus 5. This is kind of like a walkthrough review. We're going to go through a lot of elements. I'll give you my thoughts on there. But Android L was announced by Google uh, Google I/O on the 25th, or two days about two you know, two days ago. Uh, it was released. Uh, developer preview was released yesterday. We got to install it, run it, all that fun stuff, and we've used it for, for a little bit here. And I'll give me, I'm giving you thoughts. Now, this is not a video how to show you how to set it up. Uh, there are many videos on the web. You can check that out. Basically, you have to root your system. There's an easy way to root it. Uh, I got the tips from Foaming Arena, uh, courtesy of Andrew Cam. So uh, I'll leave the link for that so you can check out if you want to root your Nexus 5 or your Nexus 7. You do that and make sure you put the images in there. So here is uh, the Nexus 5 of Android L. The very first thing you will notice with the Nexus 5 as I hold this here is the lock screen notification. So I'm going to hit the power button and there you have it. I have a lock screen notification. You can see a couple of conversations have come through. I have a bunch of notifications and if I actually hit the bottom there, you can see the bottom there's a couple of notifications. If I double tap, that expands all those notifications there. So I have a lot of notifications that come through. Now, of course, I can X out some notifications like, like that. I can close that out by just basically swiping or I can double tap to get into a notification. So like this Instagram notification, I can double tap and that takes me to that notification there on Instagram and that should go through having some connectivity issues there but you get the general idea now if we lock that again you can see that's how it would look you will always have notifications like that there's no way to actually turn it off right now but you do have access to your camera and your your dialer and then of course we can swipe from the bottom up and that takes us um, into our device here. So we are in our device. This is what Android L looks like. You can see I, the icon age has changed a little bit, especially for your on-screen buttons. You now have a triangle facing left for your back, a circle for your home, and a square for your multitask. And the multitask view is also now changed to more of a card, a, taking that card UI element that we now have throughout the system. Of course, we can swipe out if we want to. We can X out if we want to. We can X that out there and we can scroll through. And it's a pretty smooth system altogether. So going back to the notifications again, as we head up here. So we pulled out a notification tray. We have this, we have our notification here and you can scroll through all of them. And uh, the notification doesn't go all the way to the bottom. You can see where it stops right there before it gets to your on-screen buttons. And then we can scroll. Now, if we want to get to our quick access menu, we have to scroll all the way down and that brings up our quick access menu. Now that gives us Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, uh, data, LTE, airplane mode, notification, volume, um, auto rotation, location, as well as casting on a screen. So we can cast to a nearby screen. Now uh, there is no battery indicator in terms of percentage. We don't have that. And we also have the um, um, screen brightness adjustment there. Now we can also top, you see it once you pull it back up, that disappears, uh, the settings icon, but you pull it back down, that comes back up. You hit that, that takes us into our settings. So what we have for settings here, and you can see that bounce UI feel that you have. It, it's a little 3D effects on the, it's almost like 3D effects on a flat surface. That's what they're trying to achieve here. So a couple of things just look at quickly here in our settings. We have our Wi-Fi, turn on and off. We can also search for Wi-Fi, do WPS push. It's all there in the settings. <laughs> Um, of course, Bluetooth now supports Bluetooth 4.1. So it's called low latency Bluetooth, which is great, of course, for all this fitness applications, data use, which of course you can go in and check while using the most amount of data. NFC and of course, NFC and default uh, MS, SMS applications, Hangouts. So we go back and then, uh, and so we have NFC mode device. We also have cell broadcast, which you can actually select to go out of Amber Alerts and show threats and things like that. So that's, that's in there. Now we scroll through, these are ba basically the same in display. It's just listed in a different view, sound and notifications the same way. Your storage is also listed. Um, I, I mean, same look, but I'm, I'm the same way, but just, you know, different. Like now this is the battery. Now the battery has um, uh, your usage in terms of days and use. You see it's 60% approximately three hours left. That's what it's telling me I have left for 60%, which is actually not good. So right now battery is not performing in my view as up to par or what should be expected. Now you can go and see the applications that are using the most amount of battery. 
I actually tapped into one there by mistake. So you can go in and say Chrome tap, it's using 2%. You can force to stop, report, app info. Certain things you can stop, certain things you can't. So Android OS, of course, you can't stop. Um, Google Play Store, you can force that to stop actually, and so on and so forth. You can actually go through those different things. Now, the battery saver is the new feature as been uh, mentioned. You can always turn, uh, have it always on. And of course that actually, it says reduces your battery uh, functionality. And you get an icon there that looks like a battery plus at the top right hand corner of your screen. If I bring that closer, you can see that's the battery saver right there. Top right hand corner of your screen. So I'm just gonna move this back a little bit more. We get a good view. So, and that gives you 15% battery life and approximately 90% more battery juice for your device. So that's the battery saver mode. Hopefully we see better performance. Again, this is not optimized in any form or fashion. This is the first release of Android L. Um, we have the apps, so we can go into applications and take a look at that again. You've got your tap and pay. Of course, when you set up Google Wallet, um, your location for location devices, security for your pins and passwords, language and input uh, there, select different keyboards. I uh, still have Facebook messages pop in and a couple of keyboards here right off the bat, Google keyboards in Hindu, Korean, uh, Pinyi and voice. And then you have the emojis, which you can also select. Um, the emojis in this, I'm gonna actually put that points of speed and all that. And of course you have your backup and resets to back up your device. Your accounts, date and time to actually set that up properly. Um, your accessibility, printing, and about phone. About phone, immediately you can see it says Android L at the bottom there. So that is it, Android L, Nexus 5. And if we double tap this, so tap it a couple of times, you get this animation. Um, doesn't necessarily mean anything right now. Maybe it's different. Basically, I think what it's basically showing is that Android L is adaptable to almost any screen size. Um, that's what I'm thinking. But that's it, it's Android L, um, it's uh, FLV file. Uh, the build is 1236599. So that's the build we are running right here on this device. So um, that's, what, that's what we have there with Android L. Now, so far I've been using Android L, almost every application works. The only application that I've not been able to run is Twitter. Twitter will not work for some reason. Um, and I can actually show you here. I can actually launch Twitter and try to sign in. Uh, I still wasn't able to sign in, uh, goes there. And then unfortunately Twitter stopped working. So Twitter is one application that does not work on Android L right now on the Nexus 5. If it works for you, let me know if that happens. Now you can see also, like I see the icons have changed again at the bottom, the dialer, it's a little bit different, but um, in these applications like the dialer has changed, the dialer look is different now. So you do have your speed dial there. You also have your floating icon there and that icon there is for your dialer to bring that up anytime you want to. Uh, you can go back, you've got recent calls, you've also got contacts and you've got full search at the very top in your dialer. You can scroll through even the, the look of just the icons for the names have, have changed within the dialer. And you can still bring that up at any point in time. So that has changed. Now, Chrome still the same, uh, still functions at the same speed and rate. Um, haven't noticed anything different yet um, in terms of uh, anything new in Chrome, uh, but they've been updating these applications separately. So that's something to take note. What I will show you that has been changed is actually the keyboard. So the keyboard layout is different now. It's got this more spread out look. There is no, there are no dividing marks between each keys. You still have full swipe uh, functionality in here. Um, if you want swipe, so you can actually pull that up. You've got, um, you know, you've got the emojis you can actually, which I just actually um, put in there. So um, you've got that in the keyboard. The keyboard looks good. Um, I like the look of the keyboard. I like the feel of the keyboard. Uh, so far it functions well. Uh, almost as good as SwiftKey in my opinion right now. Uh, but then again, it's just short use. I'll see how, how long that lasts work for me. But so far the keyboard um, has been handling very well. So that is, um, you know, that's pretty much it for, um, you know, um, Android L in terms of what you see physically. Oh, I forgot to mention something about the camera. So the camera, um, when you send the camera up and I actually have to just show you the screenshot that I took from this. So when you actually turn on the camera for the first time, you actually get a screenshot. This is actually the actual screenshot it says, choose your photo size. Do you want the sensor to be full at four by three, the eight megapixel sensor or a crop sensor at uh, 16 by nine, which would be, um, sorry, which would be a six megapixel sensor. So that's the first thing you need to select. But we go into the camera here, you can see the camera. 
um, you can see the camera settings here we can go into full settings and then we can check out the resolution of course it shows you I'm at six and the different sensor sizes and then the full image and all that fun stuff uh, video quality recording 720p for video front 1080p for the for the rear panorama higher solution you can change all that in here and that's what you have for the camera camera app again simple we've already seen that out on the market all together so overall you have google now right now it's working very well i've had no issues with with android l on this device um, the only one major issue is the twitter doesn't work and the battery right now is it's it's you know it's something i just have to give some more time to actually tell how good the battery performance will be um, on there uh, but so far battery saver has helped I will tell you that much in general. Um, I do. I will say though that the lock screen image, the lock screen notification is one part that I am not a big fan of because I don't want to turn on my device and see that every single time I turn on my device. So that's something I don't want to see. Hopefully you can turn that off at some, other, at some point in time and they'll give us some updates for that. But that's pretty much it guys. So if you have any questions or any comments about Android L, let me know um otherwise don't forget to like this video share this video and favorite this video and also yes leave your comments below um put your thoughts if you put android l on your system if you have a nexus 5 or a nexus 7 or uh, if you have any questions specifically on android l you want to know now in terms of uh, running warm uh it runs about the same as the nexus 5 was with kitkat so it's not overheating or anything like that but uh don't forget to like this video as i mentioned also subscribe to the channel top right hand corner of your screen or down in the description below so this is thunder e saying thank you and always enjoy your entertainment